So good morning. I hope you had a nice, restful night and a good breakfast. Um, today, uh, this first half of the day, we'll learn how to query Wikidata, meaning how to get data out of Wikidata. Yesterday, we got to know Wikidata, and we learned how to put things in to Wikidata. Is there, is there a problem with the sound or something? Is the translation working? Can you... Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. So yesterday we learned how to put things into Wikidata and how Wikidata works in general. But today we're going to make good on the promise I promised yesterday. Remember we talked about problems and I mentioned that one problem is that it's difficult to make cross-cutting queries of Wikipedia. Remember the example of, uh, I don't know, if I want to learn about uh, Turkish poets, that's no problem. I go to Wikipedia, category Turkish poets, done. But if I want to learn only about Turkish poets born outside modern-day Turkey, for example, which is something that would return, among others, Nazim Hikmet, right, from yesterday, because he was born in the Ottoman Empire, but outside modern-day Turkey. Uh, if I want that query, Wikipedia doesn't have a good answer for me. It's not easy to find specifically those. Or any other number of arbitrary questions, like who are some people who were born in Berlin but died in Paris? Right? Wikipedia doesn't have such a category. That's the kind of thing I can easily answer with Wikidata. And right now, we're going to learn how. So that's the topic of this session, is how to get data out of Wikidata and start answering questions we didn't even know we wanted to ask. So uh, this session has like maybe three slides, and all the rest is actual work on Wikidata query. I will be typing, I will be enlarging the screen as much as practical so that you can follow. But if you have a laptop or a tablet with you, this session might be a good one to pull it out and try to follow along, maybe make your own version of something that I'm showing. Um, but it's okay, if that would distract you, it's okay to just listen to me and then follow along. Again, the slides have links to, all the, to, to most of the queries I'll demonstrate. But if you want, this is a good time to follow along. And if you feel you may not be seeing well the code, because we're going to be writing commands in the Sparkle query language, if you think you might not be seeing them very well, I encourage you to come down. There's plenty of seats here in the front so that you can see and follow. I want to stress that querying Wikidata is, and the query language is very powerful, and I cannot teach you all the tricks in the two hours I have. Therefore, my focus is to make you definitely understand basic skills of querying so that you can start learning the rest on your own from friends, but I want to give you a solid foundation. So we will get as far as we can in two hours, depending on questions, depending on what interests you. But um, I want you to understand in advance that I'm going to also show you some impressive queries that you won't be able to make yet at the end of these two hours. They are using some more advanced features that we don't have time to learn today because today we're learning the very beginning. In order to achieve this goal of mine, it is very important for me that I have your attention and that you give me feedback. So I will ask you, I will keep asking you, is everything clear? Do you want me to explain something again? And I honestly ask you to tell me, to raise your hand, don't be ashamed, and ask a question if something is unclear. By the way, you can ask it in your own language. We have people here who will help me understand. So don't let the language <clears throat> keep you from asking either. Because again, it's important to me that you all come out at least confident in the skills that we have managed to learn here today. Okay? Because if you have that solid foundation, you will be able to uh, pick up the rest on your own. Okay? Do you agree? Okay. If you agree, give me a thumbs up. Yes, I have your attention. Awesome.
Okay. So, Wikidata is queried using a language called Sparkle, even though it's spelt with Q, it's pronounced Sparkle, like the word to Sparkle in K. And it's a query language. Those of you who have some programming background may recognize that it sounds a little like SQL, the scripted query language. That's by design. It's designed to resemble SQL. However, those of you who already know SQL, I'm going to ask you to forget that you know SQL for the coming two hours because if you're used to thinking about SQL, it'll just confuse you because it is actually quite different. Those of you who don't know SQL, you're in luck. <laughs> Uh, because you won't be confused by, by um, Sparkle. Now, before we get to any querying, I want you to remember this really important principle. Wikidata will tell you everything it knows and no more. This means the query I will run today about something will probably return more answers than the same query had I run it five years ago. Because Wikidata has learned a lot of things in those five years. Okay? And if we run the same query ten years from now, we will get even more results probably. Because Wikidata keeps developing, expanding, and learning, which means it's becoming more and more useful, right? Um, but the important thing is that when you do a query and you get some results, usually it would not be correct to say, and these are all the whatever in the world. Because Wikidata probably doesn't cover yet all the whatever in the world. We're still building it. So remember this principle. Everything you get, everything you get back from Wikidata should have kind of a disclaimer at the top saying, according to the best of Wikidata's current knowledge, you know, this is the answer. Okay, let's remember that. Um, and of course, by contributing to Wikidata, we are improving the effectiveness and the usefulness of queries in the future. In addition to this tutorial that you're having right now, there's a written text tutorial on Wikidata about Sparkle, which is linked here from the slides, which again, I will share at the end. So, let's go and learn to query Wikidata. So, what we have here is query.wikidata.org. That's the address. All the queries we're going to do are going to happen here at query.wikidata.org. Now, like I said, the query is done in a language called Sparkle. One small problem, you don't know Sparkle. So how are we going to start this query? Don't worry, remember what I told you yesterday. Wikidata loves you and wants you to succeed. Which is why it gave you this examples button. The examples button, if you are um, trying this at home, this is where you'll start. You click the examples, you click the examples button and you get this window with no less than, see here this number, 361 example queries. 361 queries already written in Sparkle that are both examples for you, but also, remember what Picasso said? Steal, right? Things for you to steal from. You can just grab any one of these 361 queries and use it for your purpose. For example, if one of these queries is showing you, uh, I don't know, a list of monuments in the United Kingdom, you can take that sparkle, find the one place in the, in the whole code that mentions the United Kingdom, change that for Turkey, and now you have a query that lists monuments in Turkey. And you didn't even have to understand how exactly the query works. You just had to find the bit that says United Kingdom and change it to Turkey. 
So again, that's a very respectable way of building queries. Uh, those of you who have tried it know. Everybody does it. It's fine. You don't have to always reinvent the complete query. So let's uh, do like Picasso and steal from the first query here. The first example here is called cats. Cats. And I'm going to click it. And I've already solved my first problem. My first problem was that there was a blank window waiting for Sparkle co code that I didn't know what to do with. Problem solved. We have some Sparkle code here. Okay, we don't understand this code yet, but we have it. Now, before I explain this code to you line by line, let's take a quick look at what it does, and then we'll understand how it does it. So if we click the play button here, right, <clears throat> it runs the query, and you can see that I got 159, this is a little small still, right, okay, you can see that I got 159 results in 81 milliseconds. That was quick. And what results did I get? Well, I have a table here with item numbers, QIDs. Remember, every item on Wikidata has a Q number. And with an item label, which is what Wikidata calls names, right? Labels, an item label. Now, this is a list of what? of cats, of cats that have Wikidata items about them. Now, Asaf, didn't you just tell us yesterday that Wikidata doesn't document absolutely everything in the world? Why does Wikidata document cats? For the same reason it documents people. Some cats are notable. Not every cat, you know, it maybe won't document the neighborhood cat here. But some cats are notable, <clears throat> and um, let's demonstrate this with one of my favorite cats, Gladstone. Does Aya Sophia have an official cat? Really? What's it called? G? GLI? Oh, awesome. Okay, I may have a new favorite cat. So if we just click through to Wikidata, there we go. Glee. It has a queue number. Wikidata knows to tell me that this is a former celebrity cat in Hagia Sophia. He died. Um, wow, we even have Hebrew labels for it. Awesome. And we can see, by the way, you know, the data modeling, right? It's an instance of a house cat, right? Not a human. Remember, we saw instance of human. So this one won't show up when I'm looking for people. Right? That's good. It's an instance of a house cat. We have an image of the cat. Aww. <laughs> and it's a female cat. And the cat was born in 2004. And was born in Hagia Sophia. And died in September 2020 in Levant. And died of natural causes of disease and was buried in Istanbul on the premises of Hagia Sophia. Tell me that's not a notable cat. <laughs> uh, country Turkey, etc. It had gray hair. This is the kind of cat it was. And it even has a Google Knowledge Graph ID and an Instagram username. That cat had Instagram. Even I don't have Instagram. <laughs> All right, and there were a few Wikipedia articles about this cat. So you can see, this is a notable cat. And, yes? Uh, Barack Obama stroked, stroked her. Wow. Ba Barack Obama never stroked me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, so you can see, there, there's a list here of... Uh, how many did we say? Of 159 notable cats. And yes, most of them are notable, um, not for anything they particularly did, because, you know, they're cats, uh, but because of where they lived or who they belonged to. You know, we have here Bill Clinton's cat, uh, the cat of Downing Number 10, the Prime Minister's office in, in the UK, etc. So, okay, so we got a list of notable cats. And again, this is the first example of the rule I taught you. Wikidata will teach you everything it knows and no more. Are there only 159 notable cats in the world? Probably not. There are probably a few more notable cats in some other palaces and important places, but nobody has modeled them on Wikidata yet. 
Nor can we say, oh, I have a query of all the cats. That's definitely not all the cats in the world, right? These are just the notable cats that Wikidata knows about. So remember that disclaimer always, right? This is not a, even though I asked Wikidata, tell me about all the cats. That's what I asked. But these are all the cats Wikidata knows about. Okay, so don't mistake the all the something Wikidata knows about with all the something. These are definitely not all the house cats in the world. Okay, so we understand what the, yes? How many cats are there in the world? How many cats are there in the world? I, I would expect, I would expect probably at least a billion, because a lot of people keep cats. We have seven billion people on the planet. That's my very, very rough estimate, but I don't know. I, I know a few things about Wikidata. I really don't know much about cats. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so we understand what this does. Yes, you had a question. Can we make a query about the population of different animals? So that we see the cats as well? <clears throat> if someone had documented it, yes. So, for example, I can imagine that maybe on the item about house cat, not about a particular cat, but the item about the genus, right, the biological species. House cat, I haven't checked, but maybe they have a property, something like worldwide population. And then that number I could grab, yes. Uh, we might look at it in the break and see if it exists. Anyway, so we understand what this very basic query does, right? It goes to Wikidata and it tells it, get me all the house cats you know about. Now let's understand how it does it. We're starting to learn the Sparkle language. It's not complicated, I promise you. At least the, the steps we're going to do today are not very complicated. So please follow along with me and remember to ask questions if you don't understand. Can you see the text, the code here from where you are? It's, it's large enough? I can do maybe one more level. But, uh, yeah, if you can't, I mean, I don't think that's the best, most practical seat for you. But if you are fine with it, fine. There's plenty of room at the, at the front. Okay. So, <clears throat> the first line <clears throat> is one of the hardest. It's a comment line. I'm kidding. It's not one of the hardest. Uh, it's a comment line. It starts with a hash mark or pound or whatever you call it, right, this thing. <clears throat> it starts with this symbol, and that symbol basically tells Sparkle, please ignore everything else on this line. No matter what it says, just ignore it. Okay? That's what this little thing does. Do you see it? So right now it says cats, but that's just kind of a reminder for us humans that this query is about cats. Because as you can see, the rest of the query is... Uh, a little more difficult to read, so it's useful when you start a query to give it like a title in a comment. If you don't put it in a comment, your human speak will confuse Sparkle, and it will complain with an ugly error like this. <clears throat> I tried to run it, and bleh, the query says, it's malformed, there's a lexical error with a lot of scary Java code and stuff, so, you know, don't go there. Uh, so... Yeah, so if we want to say something for ourselves, like a title or something, we can use a comment. And that comment can be anything we want because it's for us humans. The computer does not care. It does not care. So I can write here, Istanbul is awesome, which happens to be true, and run the query. And it will still return the same 159 cats. Okay? It, it's really just for us. That's clear? Yes? So, one line out of seven, we already understand. Awesome. Let's say cats again. Okay, the next part <clears throat> of this query uh, is divided into two sections. The first one is line number two, the select line. And the second part, and the last part, is the where block. You notice that I said the select line but the where block, because the select is on a single line, and the where starts here, but then has an open curly brace, and two other lines, and then a closed curly brace. Okay? So this bit here, between the curly braces, is called a block, 
and the, the word where has a whole block under it. Okay? They go together. Now, Sparkle doesn't care, by the way, whether it's in a single line or not. So if you wanted, you could put it all on one line. This whole where block could be you know, like this on one line, but it's just harder to read. So by convention, we put each part in its own line. Okay, so there are two parts, you said. One is the select line, and the other is the where block. The select line, for now, all you need to understand about the select line is that it tells Sparkle what you want to see in the results, in terms of display, right? Which of the different parts of the calculation or the query you want to actually be displayed at the end. In this case, we said we want something called question mark item and something called question mark item label. That's it. That's the two things we want. And by a strange miracle, that's exactly what we got. In the results, you see, we have a table. One column is called item. The other column is called item label. That's what I mentioned in my select line, right? So remember this, we, we will get back to the select line, but the one thing you need to remember is that whatever it says in the select line, those will be the columns we will get at the output. Okay? That's simple. Great. <clears throat> now, the where block is the heart of the query because it tells Wikidata what, out of all of Wikidata, 100 million items, what part interests us today. We never want all of Wikidata. Never ever. Nor can we get it, right? 100 million items is too much for the query system. But we don't want it either. I mean, Wikidata contains millions and millions of items about scientific papers, for example. If I'm interested in Turkish poets now, I don't want those millions of scientific papers coming back in the query, right? So I always want some subsection, some particular condition applied to Wikidata. I never want everything. I always want only those items that satisfy a certain condition. And the condition is expressed inside the where block. So before we zoom into the where block, was that exp explanation clear? Where is where we tell Wikidata what section of Wikidata I want, how to cut Wikidata and give me only the bit I'm interested in. Okay, all the logic. <coughs> Sorry. Do we have water today? Oh, thank you. <coughs> all the logic about what we want goes in the where block. Okay. Now, the good news is that our where block is very short. It has two lines, and one of them we're going to ignore. Uh, so, yeah, let's forget about this other line. It's very long and scary, so we will deal with it later. We have only one line we care about here, and this line, <coughs> this line has three parts. It says, question mark item, WDT colon P31, and then WD colon Q146, full stop period. What? I didn't understand anything. Uh, remember, I showed you yesterday how Wikidata thinks of data. Remember? Without the squishy human speak. Wikidata says, oh, item Q something has P31 with value Q146. Remember? That's how the data is actually stored in Wikidata. And in Sparkle, that's how we have to treat it. We have to use those P numbers and Q numbers. But wait, my psychic powers tell me you're panicking about this. Don't panic, because Wikidata loves you, remember? Wants you to succeed. So we never have to remember these numbers. We can still use our human squishy terms, but Wikidata query will turn them into numbers. Also, if we just don't remember what we meant when we wrote this query, we can hover 
over one of these numbers with our cursor, like this, and Wikidata will remind us. Oh, P31, you don't remember what P31 is? P31 is instance of. Remember that property? The first property that shows up, instance of? That's P31. Okay, so now I remember what P31 is. But before we analyze the rest of this line, <clears throat> I want to explain the principle of Wikidata query. When we tell Wikidata something in the where block, we're basically asking it to match a pattern. To match a pattern. And we give Wikidata the pattern. We tell Wikidata, I want you to match this item and this property having this value. Okay, remember the triples that we talked about yesterday? Item, property, value. Item, property, value. The item can be, for example, Turkey, and the property can be currency, and the value can be Turkish lira. Right? You remember this, the triples. So that's how the query works. Now, I have a question for you. In this query, where we want to get all the cats, Pay attention to the question. We want to get all the cats. Am I looking for a particular item number? Yes or no? Show me your hands. Yes or no? No. Correct. We're not looking for a particular cat, right? A particular cat would have a particular Q number. But remember what we want. We want all the cats. Not a particular cat, all the cats. We want all the items, in other words, that are a cat. And that's what this line means. Remember, <clears throat> I'm, I'm putting another comment here. This is where we talk about the item. This is where we talk about the property. And this is where we talk about the value, just to be clear. Yes, item, property, value. So we are telling Wikidata, you know what? I'm not actually giving you, you notice here, I'm not giving it a Q number, right? Because I'm not looking for a particular Q number. I'm looking for whatever item matches the rest of the pattern. So I'm saying, you know what, question mark, I don't care, whatever item is fine with me, let's just call it item. This is called a variable. I'm defining a variable. Uh, so whatever item it is, whatever Q number it happens to have, let's agree to call it question mark item. Okay? But what I do care about is that this item, whatever its Q number is, I want to make sure it has the property P31, which is instance of, with a value, what value? Q146, which is house cat, right? The value of house cat. You can see here, Q146 is house cat. Do you understand this line now? I'm telling Wikidata, look through all of Wikidata, all 100 million items. And I don't care about the item numbers. What I care about is that inside the item, there is an instance of property. And not just any instance of, only those that have the value house cat. I don't want instance of mountain. I don't want instance of human. I don't want instance of asteroid. I want instance of house cat. That's what this one short line does. And it cuts through Wikidata, through the 100 million items, and gives me only the house cats. Okay? That's it. That's this query. This one line, this one triple, right? This one item property value combination is enough to get all the cats from Wikidata. And what I see in the results then is you can see now that it's item and item label. It's the Q numbers that match the pattern along with the human label so that you know so that I can tell them apart because if I only got a list of Q numbers it would have been very difficult for me as a human to do anything with it, right? But Asaf, what about this long scary line? 
So this is a convenience line, believe it or not. It's very long and scary, but it's a convenience line. It's the line that helps us automatically get labels, those names that are useful for us. And in my experience, it's a waste of time to explain this line at this basic level. So let's ignore it and go on and pick up better and more interesting Sparkle skills. For now, just remember that you need this line if you want to have labels. Okay? When you get to a more advanced level, you'll be able to uh, do without this line. So we'll ignore it. Okay. So now you know how to find all the house cats on Wikipedia. Do you agree? Do you feel you know how to find all the house cats on Wikipedia? Yes? Yes? Awesome. Now, do you know how to find all the horses on Wikipedia? Yes or no? Okay. So, some, many of you have yes, some of you have no, some of you have... <laughs> So let's, let's prove this to ourselves. I would say yes, you do. You do know how to find all the horses. Because by knowing how to find all the cats, I have actually taught you how to find all the anything. Picasso. Picasso, yes. So you steal from this query of cats and you say, oh, I'm no longer interested in all the cats on Wikidata. Now I want all the horses. What should I change about this query to make it be about horses? The value. What value? What line number? Six. Line six, correct. Uh, wait, but what if I do this? What if I change cats to horses? What would I get? Yes. Nothing? Nothing. I will get cats. I will get cats. Not nothing. I will still get the same 159 cats because remember, Sparkle doesn't care about what's on that line. It just doesn't care. I could write uh, 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 Burek there. You know, I would still get cats. Okay? So that's definitely not the answer. What do I need to change? You said I need to change line 6. Specifically, now I want any item that has property instance of, but with a value, not Q146, which is house cat, but a different value, the Q number for horse. Now what is the Q number for horse? I don't remember. So what do I do? I use autocomplete. Remember, Wikidata loves you. So press control and space right after the colon. We're going to discuss the colon in a second. Right after the colon, you press control and space, and you get this type to search. I can start typing horse, and Wikidata gives me this <clears throat> drop down. Uh, yeah, heroin. Why did I get heroin as one of the results? Does anyone know? What? Because it's called horse. So, I mean, one of the alternative names, the street names for heroin, the drug, is horse. Because it also starts with H and people need code words. Now, Wikidata knows this. If you go to the item about heroin, and you look on the right side on the aliases, right, the also known as, you will see that one of them is horse. And that's why it offers me horse here. But of course, I'm not interested in heroin. I'm interested in the domesticated four-footed mammal from the equine family. Yeah, that's the horse. So it's Q726. I select it, I press enter, and look what happens to my horse. It just changed to the number. Remember, you need to have the number, not our human words. So now the number says Q726. What about this? It says must be of a cat. Should I change it? I don't have to, is the correct answer. Because remember, Sparkle doesn't care what comes after this. But I still should change it for my own purposes, so that I don't confuse myself in the future, right? I mean, if I made a comment like this, I may as well keep it accurate, so that if I look at this four months from now, 
I can understand what it is. So let's see. Let's test our theory. Our theory is that this will give us horses, right? We're running the query. And we have 14,000 notable horses. Are you surprised? No? Why do we have horse races? That's right. That's right. You know, sometimes when the data surprises us, and some of you were surprised, right? Oh, we have like a hundred and something notable cats, but 14,000 notable horses? But if you think about it, even without looking, you can come up with a hypothesis. Horse races are a big thing, and racing champions are notable, and we have statistics about them, etc. There are historical war horses of... Uh, emperors and Alexander the Great, and you know, so yeah, there are many more notable horses than cats because you can try to make a cat race, but the cats won't care, <laughs> right? <coughs> so it worked. We got a number of a large number of horses, and we can, you know, um, look at this one for example, Bukephalos. Who is Bukephalos? Do you know? <laughs> Right, that's Alexander's horse. If I click through, I get to the item about Bukephalos with everything we know about him, etc. Okay. Yes, question. Seth. Neden sadece küçük Why can we use capital Q? Why can we use capital Q, not the little one? Would it work like this? Yeah, it's it's case sensitive. Yes, yeah. You do need to make it lo- uh, uppercase Q, uppercase P, because <coughs> that is the name of the uh, entity in Wikidata. Yes, so you have to keep that uppercase. Um, okay. So I've proved to you that by teaching you how to find all the cats, I actually taught you how to find all the anything. Now I'll ask you again. Do you think you know right now how to find all the planets on Wikidata? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, right? Okay, now you got the principle, right? This one line query, I mean it's uh, nine lines or whatever, but it's one, one line in the where block. It's one condition, basically. Can, t- can solve any problem of the form of the problem get me all the cats. We just replace the cats with whatever we're looking for and it works, right? And this is a principle of all the queries I'm going to teach you today. I'm going to teach you how to do one thing with one example, but you can just change the parameters of the example. In this case, we changed one Q number for another and you can solve any problem, any query of that shape. Now, some of you, now that you have this superpower, may be feeling a bit drunk with power. Oh my God, I can query Wikidata for absolutely anything. Yes, but no. You know how to query for all the things of the kind so-and-so. But some of the questions we want to ask are a little more nuanced than that. We want not all the things that are so-and-so, not all the cats. Maybe we want, for example only the living cats. So not including Glee. Only cats that are still alive. That you don't know how to do yet. Okay? So I just don't want you to get too drunk with power, you know? Uh, But we will learn how to do that. Okay. So, so we know how to find all the horses. Yes, you had a question. Oh yes, yes. Yes, thank thank you for thank you for asking. I promised that I would talk about it. So <clears throat> actual sparkle actual sparkle works with URLs, with URIs rather. Which means that this query in real sparkle would actually look something like https wikidata.org slash entity slash P31 or something like that. 
And then for the Q726, I would have to say HTTPS wikidata.org slash entity slash Q726, right? And nobody wants to do that, right? Nobody wants to have to repeat that all the time. We're talking about Wikidata all the time. We know this. We want some kind of shorthand. And that's what these things are. Okay? These uh, prefixes, we call them, right? It's a prefix. It's something that comes before the number. And it's just short for that part of the URL that we don't want to have to type again and again. And before submitting the query, when we press play, there's a bit of software that kind of just changes those prefixes to the full URIs so that the sparkle would work. Okay? Now, the thing to note here is that they're not the same. You see that the value has WD colon. Right? WD colon. Wiki data colon. That's clear enough, right? I'm talking about Wikidata item Q726. But the P31 doesn't have WD colon. It has WDT colon. And that's because it's a prefix for something slightly different. Never mind the details, right? But the, the, URI, the URI for the property is a little different, and so we need a different prefix. Now, you don't have to memorize it. If you ever get confused, remember, just go back to the examples, the examples, and select cats, and you will have this query again to remind you that the, the middle part, the property, needs to have the WDT prefix. T for proper T. Okay? Remember Asaf pronouncing this amusingly. T for proper T. Yes? Okay, WDT for property, WD for any item. Whenever you mention an item that starts with a Q, it should start with WD colon Q. Whenever you mention a property, you should have WDT colon and then the P of the property. Yes? Of, does the order of the WDT or WD matter or can you change them? No, it absolutely matters because as we said in our previous query, <clears throat> Wikidata expects these triples in this order, item, property, value. It absolutely matters. Okay? Item, property, value. Okay. So we know how to find all the cats and all the horses and all the planets. <clears throat> Now I want to prove to you that we can change another element in this one line query. We can change another element. We can look for, for example, uh, things named after Queen Elizabeth II. Okay? Things named after Elizabeth II. Now, <coughs> The first step when we build a Wikidata query is to try to translate our wish, right? I wish upon a star, oh, I want all the things named after Queen Elizabeth. Now I need to translate that into Wikidata terms. What would it look like in Wikidata terms, in terms of properties and values, for something to be named after Queen Elizabeth? How would it be modeled in linked data. Does anyone have an idea? Yes. So we change the property one that takes name after. Yes. And we use the, uh, you know, the value Queen Elizabeth. That's right. That's exactly right. We, we have a property on Wikidata called named after. So that we can say about one item that it is named after something else. Now, my psychic powers tell me, well, how could we have guessed that? How could we have guessed that there's a property named named after? You couldn't have guessed that. But you could have searched for it. <coughs> Our uh, colleague Nerlihan, is she here? Uh, Neslihan, sorry, Neslihan. She's not here? 
Okay. Uh, yesterday, Nestle Han uh, showed us uh, a tool called Prop Browse, a property browser. That's a tool where you can just search and see whether there's something called named after. That's one way to find it. Another way to find it, remember, is to steal, to look for a query that already looks for things that are named after and see what they used. A third way to do it is to look for an item that you know is named after someone. Maybe even not Queen Elizabeth, because what we're looking for is the property name, right? So pick anything that's named after anyone, something named after Ataturk, whatever, and you know that it's named after someone, and look through the properties in the item and look for where it is modeled that it is named after that person, right? So any one of these three method methods could have helped us, but you're right that what I want to de demonstrate here is that in this same single line query, single where line query, we can still learn another power, and that is the power to look for things with different properties. In this case, named after. So I typed named. The first result is language of work, not what I'm looking for. Object named as, not what I'm looking for. Subject named as, no. Named after, that's what I'm looking for. Named after. P138. Okay? P138. Named after. Now, named after who? We said Queen Elizabeth. So what do I need to put here? The Q number for Queen Elizabeth, right? Let's type this. Here we go. Elizabeth II. Right? We want Elizabeth II, not Elizabeth I. Nor do we want Queen Elizabeth, the mother queen, the queen mother, you know, the mother of the queen who just died. No, we want Elizabeth II, the one who was queen from 1952 to 2022. Um, she is not a cat, right? Named after Elizabeth II, right? And now we'll change this again as well. Things named after Elizabeth the second. Now, before we test this, what about the instance of? Now we're no longer asking for a match against instance of. Is that okay? Is that what we want? Yes. Yes, yes it's okay. Because remember, now we're looking for things named after Elizabeth, whatever they may be. One may be, I don't know, a church, a bridge, a school. We don't know. Instance of what? We don't care. We want all the things that are named after Queen Elizabeth. So that's okay that we don't have a, a limitation, a pattern that requires a match with instance of. That's exactly what we want. And we can run this query. And we will see 86 results. Now... Are there only 86 things named after Elizabeth II in this world? No. We know for sure there are tons of you know, elementary schools in former colonies and stuff that must be named after Elizabeth II, right? But Wikidata doesn't know about them. Remember the rule. Wikidata tells you everything it knows and nothing more. So what do we have named after her? Well, we have the Queen Elizabeth Islands and the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park and the National Park and the Hall and whatever. You know, the Royal Alberta Museum is also partly named after her. Uh, Queen Elizabeth Center, Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering. You see we got a very diverse set of results, right? Parks and prizes and uh, centers and things. Uh, hospitals, you know, great. So... In other words, you now know with one line of meaningful query, you know not only how to get all the whatever, you basically know how to get all the items that have a particular value in a particular property, right? More generally now we understand. You now know how to find things named after things. You now know how to find all the people who speak Turkish, you now know how to find, I don't know, um, all the countries that border with uh, Bulgaria with just this one line. Because you, you can express it as a query. Item borders with Bulgaria. That's it. You will find all the things that border with Bulgaria in one line. 
That's a superpower. Yes, questions. Uh, I feel that uh, there is just one little step to be taken uh, so that we can use a graphical user interface for all these things. Uh, there is almost a uh, pull-down menu here. Could yes. we just have, uh, or is it in the making? That's an excellent question and an excellent intuition. Uh, you felt that this, this could be easier. This could have just been a, a drop-down menu you know, of properties and a drop-down menu of values. Um, yes, it, it could be. And in fact, I'll tell you a little secret. There is a button here called Query Builder. And that is what it does. It offers you a different interface with drop-downs where you can kind of visually create a query. Why are you not teaching us that, Asaf? <laughs> because that's cheating. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, not because it's cheating, because this is a lot less powerful. Okay? And also a lot easier. So now that you know it exists, you can use it for simple queries. My goal is to actually teach you beyond what this can do. This can only help you build fairly simple queries. Okay? I want to actually give you the keys, the superpowers, to build more complex queries. But thank you for this question. Okay. I also have a question. Yes. Yeah, me. Yes. So, uh, is it possible to use numbers instead of, you know, item? Like, let's say, uh, I want to find people who were born in June the 5th, 1959. Yes. So yes. I can use its dates. You, you, you can do that, and I will demonstrate that later. Right. Thanks. Yes. <clears throat> Excellent question. Question that I have an answer for. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, look at complicating things just a little bit. Um, what if I want to find all the novelists? All the novelists, people who write novels. Can anyone help me? How do I do that? What? What? Oh, well. uh, okay. Uh, who wants to help me with a microphone? Only you? Okay. But you know some Wikidata queries, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Someone who is new, who learned this today. You? Okay. Over there. The microphone. Over there. Up there. Yes. <clears throat> Can we turn it on? So now I want all novelists. Yeah, yeah. OK, I'm ready. What shall we do? Hello? Hello. <laughs> so uh, we need uh, all items. Question mark item. Yeah. Then WDT. Uh-huh. Uh, control and space. Uh-huh. Search for instance of, not, not instance of, occupation maybe. Ah, occupation. Right? Because we're not born novelists, right? Novel, being a novelist is an occupation. It's something you do. It's not something you just are. I mean, some people may feel, I'm just a novelist. I'm made of novelist atoms, right? But we're humans, at least in Wikidata. The way Wikidata views the world is that people, people are instance of human. Whatever they do, they're instance of human. They're not instance of novelist, right? So thank you for that. Very good point. What we want is not instance of. What we want is occupation. And occupation is P106. Okay, P106. And then what value? WD. WD. Control space again. Maybe go. Control, control novelist. space. Novelist? Maybe. Yeah. Let's check. Yeah, let's try. Novelist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Novelist. Writer of novels. That's what we mean. Mm -hmm. Right? Awesome. So this has some horrible long Q number that we don't care about. We don't have to remember it. Okay? But because these are you know, confusing numbers, it's helpful to write little comments, again, for ourselves to remind us what this line does. So this says, occupation, novelist, right? 
And we don't actually need the novelist to be named after Queen Elizabeth, right? So we can remove this line. We can have more lines, yes, we can have more than one line. Ah, so we're getting to that, excellent. But first, let's see if we can get all the novelists. Let's run this query and see what we get. This is taking a little longer than the cats because there are more novelists than cats. But we got the result in 12 seconds and we got 28,501 results and we can start looking at them. Douglas Adams, Carl Sagan, Denis Diderot, Stendhal, Emile Zola, Victor Hugo, uh, lots of French novelists, Mikhail Bulgakov, Franz Kafka. Okay, yeah, these are all, you know, novelists. It looks like it worked, right? But 28,000 pieces of data is a little too much for me. So how about we narrow it down to only Turkish novelists? Now, this is something we haven't done before. All of our queries up to this point were one line, right? But we can actually add any number of lines we want. We can combine conditions. When we add another line, we're telling Wikidata, I want you to match two patterns. This and this. The items that you return to me have to satisfy both conditions. The first condition is that the occupation is novelist. The second condition, what do I mean when I say Turkish novelists? Nationality. Nationality, Turkey. Right? I mean, that's one thing I could mean. I, I could also mean novelists writing in Turkish, right? Not all of whom are Turkish citizens. Right? Now, which one would we want? Remember, some of the Turkish novelists are not or were not citizens of Turkey, they were citizens of the Ottoman Empire. Some of them were, you know, living in other countries, some of them are American. Right? So we need to think. Again, remember, the first step is to translate our imprecise, squishy human language to strict Wikidata data modeling terms. You know, I can sit, uh, st stand here and wave my arms and say, you know, Turkish novelists. And I feel that everybody understood. But actually, statistically, probably, some of you are thinking about people from Turkey, and others are thinking people who wrote books in Turkish. These are partially overlapping groups, but they're not the same, right? Now, when we ask Wikidata, we have to make up our minds. What are we asking? Are we asking about citizenship? Or are we asking about language? By the way, we could be asking about both. We could say people who are Turkish citizens and are writing in Turkish, right? But we have to decide what it is we're asking. So for the purpose of this example, before the break, let's decide. What are we asking? Language? Language. Okay, so how do we do that? Who can help me? We need another line. Now in this, remember the lines have item, property, and value. Item, property, and value. So, are we looking for a specific item here? No. No. Remember, we're looking for all the Turkish novelists, right? So, we're still not specifying a specific item number. We're still saying question mark item, whatever item. Okay. And now, what property do we use? WDT? Yeah. Language... Language, so we have languages spoken, written, or signed. We also have another uh, property called writing language. Right, that's more accurate. Good, we'll pick that one. And then what is the value? Turkish, right? WD colon, I don't remember the Q number for Turkish, so I press control space. Turkish is Q256. Okay, excellent. At the end of every line, finish with a full stop. Don't forget the full stop or you'll get an error. Okay? One, two, three. Item, property, value, full stop. Okay? Language, Turkish. Okay. Let's see if that works. We had 28,000 results previously and now we have seven. 
27 people wrote in Turkish. Right? Wrong. What does this mean? It means you people have not put in enough <laughs> novelists writing in Turkish or that I made a mistake in picking the property. Right? Because, for ex so let's see, what, what did we get? We got some famous uh, Turkish novelists even I heard of. Right? Pamuk, Shafak, etc. Okay, great. But that's obviously... Uh, unsatisfying results, right? It's, it's obviously unacceptable. So let's do an experiment before we go to the break. Let's do an experiment. Instead of writing language, which you can see, by the way, from the number, property 6,800 versus language, what was it? Language spoken, written, or signed, which is property 1,412. This literally tells us it's an older property. It's been around for a longer time. And probably many of the Turkish writers who were modeled on Wikidata in previous years didn't have the newer property writing language, so they used this property. Even though maybe today it would be more accurate to say writing language. Let's test this theory. Let's run this query and see what we get. We got 56 results. That's a lot better, right? Still including Pamuk and Shafak, okay? But now we have a lot more uh, results. Still probably disappointing, right? There are more than 50 Turkish novelists, but that means you have work to do. Okay, so again, another demonstration of how Wikidata tells us what it knows, nothing more. It doesn't really tell us what's out there in the world. It tells us what it knows about what's out there in the world. But before we go to the break, I want you to appreciate that just by adding this one line, I have now given you another superpower. And that's the superpower of intersection. Because just like we said... Not just all the novelists. All the novelists who also satisfy another condition, people who speak Turkish, and only the intersection of those two circles. That's what I want. Now you can do that for any two conditions that you like. Right? Now you can, you can look for, um, I don't know, um, people from, uh, yeah, like people born in Berlin, the example I gave, who died in Paris. These are two separate groups, and you can now intersect them, right, and find out people who both have place of birth, Berlin, place of death, Paris, right, and you can intersect them. And I will blow your minds before we go to the break. I actually taught you how to do that, not just intersecting two groups, but how many groups? As many as you want. So you're going into the break now, able to combine 17 conditions if you want. You already know how to ask for, for example, humans who were born in Istanbul are football players who died in Berlin and speak Polish. I just made that up, right? But you can do that. You can ask Wikidata who satisfies this crazy set of criteria. You can already do that just by adding another line with another triple pattern to match. Enjoy your break. Are you drunk with your new powers? Yes? Um, yeah. So, yes. Oh, wait, we need a microphone. Where's the microphone? Yes. <clears throat> that way the translators can translate so others understand. Yes. It's a silly question. Mm -hmm. Do we need all novelists? Could we have just put novelists at the top? Oh, uh, remember what the top line does? Remember what this top line does? Just remind us? or Absolutely nothing. Oh, it does nothing? It does nothing. It's just for us okay. to, to remind us what we meant to do. Okay. So Thank to you. prove this to you, I will now change this line to say garlic. Okay? And I would run the query, and I would get the exact same 56 results. Okay? <laughs> so it doesn't matter what this says. This could be, you know, query number 700, and, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just for us. It's a label. Yes, what actually gave us the novelists is this line, 
right? The line that says, I want the property 106, the occupation property, to have the value 662, whatever, novelist. That's what gave us the novelist, whatever the comment said, right? Okay. <clears throat> so we left on this mind bending idea that we now have the power to combine an arbitrary number of conditions, however many we want. We can look for any combination. We gave some crazy examples before the break. So that's sort of an exponential rise in your superpowers. Yes, you had a question. Uh, maybe I'm jumping too far ahead, but I want to ask, can, like, how can we do uh, uh, more than one occupation? Like all novelists and poets, or or, or Ixor, or whatever. Like excellent question. Yes, excellent question. Let's do that. How do we, so, so what we've learned is how to add more and more conditions to say it must be this and it must be that, right? But the question we got here, sorry, what's your name? Eger. Eger? Yes. Uh, what Eger uh, asks us to do is slightly different. It's not, it has to be this and it has to be that and it has to be this. He wants us to say it has to be this or that, right? Or, it's different. We learned how to add conditions that are anded together, as programmers say, right? It's both this and that and this, the intersection of all these circles. But what if we want an or? What if we want uh, Turkish, people who write in Turkish, that's, this condition is fine, but we want both novelists and poets. So theoretically, we can just add another line, right? that says item, occupation, which is P106, and then here, say poet, right? Poet, person who writes poetry. What would this do? Yes, this would not quite do what we want. This would give us, so instead of 56 results, we now have 10 results. Instead of 56 novelists, we now have only 10. Why? What happened here? It's not what I meant. We got people who are both novelists and poets. And there are such people. You know, this list, I guess, are people who wrote both novels and poetry, and that's what we asked Wikidata for, so that's what we got. Wikidata doesn't care about what you meant, what you wanted. It answers what you actually asked. And in this case, we were hoping to get novelists or poets, but we didn't tell Wikidata. What we told Wikidata is get me someone who matches all three patterns, right? has to have property novelist, also has to have property poet, uh, occupation poet, and language Turkish. So that's what we got. What we wanted was not an intersection in mathematical terms or set theory terms. What we wanted is, what's the opposite of intersection? In a union, right? We wanted a union of the circles. And that's literally what it's called. So what we do is this. Are you paying attention? What we do is this. We surround this condition with curly braces. We make it into a block. Remember? Whatever is in curly braces is a block. We also surround the second condition in a block. And between them, we say union union. And now, instead of 50, how many, how many results do we expect? More than 60. We don't know exactly, but it should be more than 56, because 56 was the novelists. We expect there would be some poets added, right? That's what we can expect, and let's see what we get. We got 424 results. And now, we expect that these results 
See, we got our old friend Nazim Hikmet here. We didn't get him before, you remember, but we got him now because he's a poet. So we got here the novelists that we had before and the poets, including those ten <coughs> who are both. Right? Does that answer your question? So now we got a new superpower. We can union, we can do or about some of the conditions we want. Of course, again, remember, everything I teach you uh, expands uh, laterally. I mean, now that you know how to make a union in occupations, you also know how to make a union in languages, right? You could look for novelists who write in either Turkish or Kazakh, right? Now you know how to do that. You just put the union on the language line and add the Q number for the Kazakh language. Right? <clears throat> okay. So that was a nice expansion of our superpowers. Uh, by the way, uh, feel free to take pictures of these queries. Uh, they're not written down. I mean, I'm, I'm making them as we go. But in the slides that I will share, there are links to similar queries that demonstrate these features. So you'll be able to use those. Uh, and many more queries that we probably won't get to now. Uh, when, when does this session end? We, we are ending at 12? 12 and a half. Thank you. Okay. So let's learn some more superpowers, because my goal is really to get you out uh, to lunch drunk with power. I, I want to see people going, <laughs> yeah, like a villain in a movie. Okay. So what else can we, yes? No curly uh, braces on the third line? No, because the third line is just a regular condition. The reason we needed curly braces here was to, ex to, to express that the union I want is just between, just between these two blocks. Right? That's why I put curly braces here. Okay. Now, yes? Uh, hello. Can we extend the columns on the select side? Let's say I want to see the birth of the date of the peoples. Yeah. This is a fantastic question. Because not only, remember, an excellent question is something I have a slide for. But a fantastic question is a question that is the very next slide. <laughs> Sorry. So that was literally what I was going to uh, go to next. So thank you. Um, the question was, can we get more data in the results? Because we only, we're only getting the number and the name, right? But we know that Wikidata has a lot of more data about these people, right? So that's an excellent question. Let's try and get some more data. For example, date of birth, okay? Or place of birth. Things that we know, Wikidata knows about most of those people. How can we do that? What is responsible for the columns that I'm getting in the results? You know this because I told you. What is responsible? The select line. Very good. The select line. Remember? We didn't do much about it in the last half hour, but the select line literally tells Wikidata what we want to receive back. Okay, so we want a date of birth in, in addition to the item, which is a Q number, and the item label, which is the name. We also want a date of birth, right? Okay, so I can add here in the select line something called date of birth. We cannot use spaces, so I'm using uh, underscores, right? Date of birth, right? Would this work? No? Have faith. Why not? Uh, let's press play and see what happens. <clears throat> well, I got a date of birth column. Right? Because the select line tells which columns I'll get. One small problem, it doesn't actually include the date of birth. <laughs> right? I deliberately did this because I wanted to show you the select line does determine which columns you will see. But it is not responsible for the content of those columns. The content we need to uh, uh, put in in the where block. Back to the where block. Okay. So we have now kind of a, a place 
to put the date of birth. Now we need to somehow feed data into the date of birth. Remember I told you that the things that start with a question mark are variables. Right? So we have basically said, I also want you to display the value of the variable date of birth. The only problem is I haven't put any value into date of birth. So that's what we're going to do next. And how do we do it? We do it simply by placing it where we want the value to come from. So we want the date of birth. So we want the item. The item, remember, is the variable that stands for whatever person we're talking about, right? We're talking about Turkish novelists and poets, right? So that same, sorry, that same person, that same item, we also want the property, sorry, the property date of birth, right? Date of birth, 569. We want that property to um, be put... Are we looking for a specific date of birth? No, right? We want all the novelists and poets, whatever their date of birth is, that's, the, that's what you have to ask yourself always. Am I looking for a particular value here? If so, then I should specify it like I did. Like I did here, like I did here, right? I specified a specific value that I'm looking for. But in this case, I'm not looking for a particular date of birth just as I wasn't looking for a particular item number, right? I wanted all the novelists, whatever their item number. So by the same logic, I'm putting a variable here, not a particular value, a variable starting with a question mark. And I say date of birth. What this tells Wikidata is that another pattern I want you to match is that this item should have property 569. And whatever value is in there, I want, you to, I want to make an agreement Let's call that date of birth. Whatever's in there, that's the date of birth. And now, if we run this query, the value for date of birth that we want to be in the output, in the select line, the value for it will come from inside the query, from this where line. And to prove it to you, I'm going to run it. And when, when I run it, you will see that we will get values here. Now, we have 424 novelists or poets, right? Let's run this and see what happens. You see, we have dates of birth. So now we have another column and data. One small problem, less data. How many did I have? 424. How many do I have now? 421. What happened? We lost three Turkish novelists or poets. They don't have a date of birth in Wikidata. I mean, they do have a date of birth. But Wikidata doesn't, doesn't know their date of birth. And why are they not in my results? Why are they not just there with you know, an empty field? That's what we would expect, right? We would expect it to just be empty. That's what we would expect. But that's not what we told Wikidata. Remember, Wikidata loves you. It wants to do what you tell it. But it cannot do what you think. It can only do what you tell. And what we told Wikidata, remember, whenever we add a line to our query, we're making a condition. We told Wikidata. We demand that the item have a occupation property with this value or that value. We demand that they have language Turkish. If it doesn't have language Turkish, I don't want it in my results. We also told it, we demand that the item have a date of birth with some value, doesn't matter which, but we demanded 
a property and a value. So that's what we got. We got the 421 novelists and poets who do have a date of birth, and there are three from that list that apparently don't. Now, we want them too. We do want them. We just want them to be empty, right? But that's not what we said. We said it has to have a value. So the next little thing that we will learn... Yes, bring the microphone there, and I'll answer in a second. The next thing we learn is how to do, how to say what we mean. What we meant was, we just want to see the date of birth. We don't actually want it to be a condition, right? We, we made it a condition, but that's not what we want. We just want to say, if there's a date of birth, please show it. That's what we meant. So to do that, we use a new keyword called optional. Optional. We say optional, and then we need a block. This thing is optional. Okay? That means... I want you to look at that property. If there is a value, I want you to put it into my variable date of birth so that I would get it in the output. But if not, no worries. I still want this item in my results. That's what we mean. Uh, sorry, that's what we're saying now, which is what we meant. Right? Let's run this. And how many results do we expect now? 424. And it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? <coughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Very good. Excellent example. See, I just unthinkingly, I just put the curly brace at the end, you know, the end of the block. But you see what happened? It's after the comment. And remember, we told you, everything after the comment is ignored. So, effectively, I started a block here, and I did not close it. I did not finish it, which makes an error. Now, Sparkle loves us, but it's not that intelligent to say, oh, I see what you did here. You put it in the comment, but you meant it to be before the comment, and fix it. It can't do that. So we need to find our error, and in this case, I just move it here, right, before the comment. I mean, there's no comment here, actually. I can just delete it. N now it's a proper block. Just a second. I'll, I'll answer your question. Um, so now we have this optional block. We can actually add a comment and say, include a date of birth if it exists, right? Which is what we mean. And now we can run it. And now we got even more results. That's interesting. Uh, someone added some poets and, and novelists. Awesome. But anyway, you can see here, if we look carefully, eventually, as we scroll, we will find one or two. Oh, there we go. See? Sheikh Ahmed Gilsheri. Uh, doesn't have a date of birth on Wikidata, but still was included in our query. That's what we meant. And we did it using the optional keyword. Yes, now you can ask your question. Uh, how to find novelists uh, who uh, were born today? How to find what, sorry? Uh, who, uh, who novelists born today? Uh, who are alive. Is that what you meant? Born today. Uh, beyond today. Born today. The birthday is today. Yes. Good question. Yes. Pe people whose birthday is October 22nd. Yes. That's a good question. Not an excellent question because we're not getting to it immediately. But I will show it. I will show it a little later. I want to learn a few things before that. Yes. You had a question up there. Yes. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, are the nine people that were included really like added right now, or is it a different thing that happens? Should be because nothing else changed about this query. So yes. Someone is working. Yeah, yeah. Some someone is working. Maybe someone in this room added a class. But yeah, that would okay. be the the explanation. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, the variable assi like assigning that we had to do for date of birth, we didn't do this for item label. So is it happening by itself? Very, very good question. So, so did, you, did you get that question? I just showed you how we put a value into date of birth. But we didn't see how the value goes into item label, right? We did see how it goes into item. Yeah. How does it go into item? Oh, no, we didn't see it either. We did I see guess. it right here. 
right yeah, here. It just picks the, uh, yeah, yeah, it happens, yeah. Just like I say date of birth, because I don't care about the particular date of birth, and that puts values in the variable, I also said question mark item. Whatever the QID is, let's call it item. That put the value into item. Okay? Mm. What I didn't show you is how the item label gets populated. That's a good question. And the answer is? Remember that line we've been ignoring? The line? Yeah. This long, scary line? You can actually see it's literally called service label. It's a piece of code that automatically gets the label for us. And the reason is so many queries, almost all our queries, we want labels. And we want to save people the, the, the time having to you know, grab the label with, with two or three lines of uh, Sparkle. So that's why the service is there. Um, it's a little more complex than that, but I, I don't want to get into that technical detail. But if you care, we can talk about it on the break. Uh, okay, but that's a good question. That's where it comes from. And by the way, to prove that, let's remove this line for a moment and run our query again. Same query, same results, 433. No item label. But my item label is gone. You see? So it's still there. The column is still there because I still mention it in the select line. But there's no value in it now because the value was calculated by that long, scary line of the service. Okay? Um, I will say one thing about this service line. At the end of this line, you can see, never mind the rest, but you can see here, after the word language, it says auto language, automatic, comma, English. Now, I could change this to, let's say, um, Kazakh, okay, KK, and run this query. And something amazing happens. I get the same 433 results, but in Kazakh. Okay? So I can actually get the labels of the items in whatever language I choose. By the way, we can also see that many of these Turkish novelists and poets don't have a label in Kazakh. They don't have a label, so I'm getting a Q number. I mean, there's nothing else to show. Uh, if I don't want that, if I want to say, look, I would prefer Kazakh, but if you don't have a Kazakh label to show me, show me something else that I can read, not numbers. I can actually do that using the comma. I can say, you know what, let's go with Kazakh, and if you don't have Kazakh, let's go with Arabic. And if you don't have Arabic, let's go with English. Something like that. And of course you can pick whatever sequence you like. And now we can run this again. And we will see that we have Kazakh. Uh, where was it? Here. Kazakh for Hikmet. We don't have Kazakh for this person, so we get an Arabic label. And for other people, we get an English label. Okay? So we got what we wanted here. So this is the, the useful part of this long, scary line, is that you can control the language of the label that you're going to get, and even specify a fallback language. You know, you can specify your own language, but if a lot of these things don't have labels in your language, you can say, okay, if not Kazakh, then Russian. If not Russian, then Arabic. Whatever, whatever you can read, whatever can work for you. And you may remember that we, it used to say... What did it used to say? It used to say auto language in kind of brackets. What does that mean, automatic language? <clears throat> it means the language of the interface. I am right now using the query service in English. You can see that it says English labels. But I don't have to. I can actually click here on the language at the, at the corner there, switch to Turkish. Let's switch to Turkish. Ta-da! Suddenly, it's not examples, but örnekler, right? And now, without changing this line, without changing this line, I want to prove it to you, so I'll use uh, Arabic, because it's clearer, because the, the um, uh, script changes, right? Um, what? 
Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, right, because in Turkish it's not Arabic. That's a good point. Yes. So let's let's check. No, 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 but now I'm in English. That was supposed to work. Yeah, but which one of these? There's <laughs> Al Arabiya, yes, okay. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so now I changed to Arabic. The the interface changed, it's right to left, everything. But now if I query Without changing the auto language, you see, I'm getting results in Arabic by default with a fallback to English. So that's what auto language means. I mean, to begin with, you don't have to use the query system in uh, English. You can use it in your own language. And to show you the difference, I will also uh, sh show you... Oh, uh, can someone send me the, the word for occupation in Turkish? Because I can... For occupation. Yeah, yeah, but how to spell that? <laughs> M-E-S? Okay. Let's try this. So my point is that if I switch to Turkish, I can do the autocomplete in Turkish. This one. There we go. P-106. I know. Yeah. See? So I don't have to invent, oh, what would this be called in English, you know? I can s use the query system in my own language. That's very important that you know. And the way to do it is to change the language up there. Right? And then you can use properties and everything in your language, assuming that you have the labels. Right? I mean, if you are typing something and it doesn't have a label, you should add that label. Do it once, and then nobody else would ever have to teach Wikidata how to say occupation ever again. Of course, the result is the same. When I click enter, it's P106. Right? Wikidata doesn't care that you call it Mesheli and, and I call it occupation. That's fine. Uh, okay. So back to English for my benefit. Um, yeah. All right, so that was about the labels. We had more questions before we move on? <coughs> what should we do to get, like, uh, li uh, ordered lists? If ordered lists? Yeah, like A, B, C. Or yeah, very good question. So, looking at our query again, we have a query that returns a whole bunch of Turkish novelists and poets. But really, I would like an alphabetized list because I want to see if someone is there or not and it's easier to see if it's ordered, right? So this is one point where it is kind of like SQL. Remember I told you to forget everything you know about SQL. But how would you do this in SQL, do you know? Order by. And that's how you do it in, um, in uh, Sparkle. And you say, after, you notice that I put it at the very end, after the where block, not inside it. The where block is just for conditions. Um, so after the where block, I can say, order by, by what do I want to order it? By the item? By the item label. We don't want to order by the queue numbers. They mean nothing. We want to order by the item label. And if I run this query... Now I get the same 433 results, but starting with the ones that have no label. But after that, A, A, B, A, D, etc. Right? After that, we got it sorted. Okay? So there's another little superpower for you, sorting the results. Uh, questions? Yes, you had a question. Yeah, I think I just noticed why we uh, the number of the results was increased. It's because some people have more than two dates of birth uh, information, like properties. Ah. Like Aziz Nesin, I saw it. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, yeah. AZ, uh, there were two different birthdays. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Any other? Yes. Uh, and I want to learn and each query he says that he was born just one day before just one day before the conqueror 
of Istanbul. Conc yeah. So if the birth date, date of birth is not yeah, yeah, yeah. obvious, yeah. what should we do? I want, I want to build up to it, okay? Uh, we'll get to date of birth later because, yes, that, that needs to be expressed in a, in a particular way. Yes? That list came up with alphabetizing the first name. Yes. How do you get it to do the surname? Uh, that's a good question. And the answer is it alphabetizes the label, the label of the item. And the label of the item starts with the first name. Now, if we want to alphabetize by the surname, we have to somehow get the surname as distinct from the label. And where is the surname in Wikidata? Just the surname? It's a... It's a property. It's a property, not the label. It's a property inside the item. There is a property on most items called surname. So we could do, what we could do is say, you know what, I want this item to have the surname property, family name. It's called family name, P734. Now, am I looking for a specific family name? No, I want whatever surname the poet has. So let's put it into a variable. Remember that rule. If I'm not looking for a specific value, I should put it into a variable. I'm putting it into a variable called surname. And now, I want to see that surname, right? So let's add surname to my select line so that it comes out in the report. And then, will I get surnames? Yes. Well, kind of. Oh dear, what did I get? What did I get here instead of surnames? Ah, that's correct. So, uh, let's take this person, Ahmed Arif, right? His surname, apparently, is Q23774341. What? If we click on this, we see that this is an item called Arif. It's an item about the family name Arif. We have items about names. And for good reason, because we have things to say about those names, like what is the language this name is in? What does it mean? You know, all kinds of, what writing system it is. Google phonetics, I, I don't know, all kinds of things. Uh, di IDs in dictionaries of surnames. We have things to say about this name. So, in other words, the value of this property, property 734 surname, the value was not a string of characters. The value was a link to another item. And that's what we got. We got the number of the other item. But that's not what we wanted, right? What we wanted in this case, for this query, was to get the actual surname, right? Not the number of the surname. So what might we do to get the name, not the number of the name. Order by? Well, yes, we would want to order by the surname, but first we have to get the surname. Right now we don't have the surname, we have the QID of the surname. How did we solve it for the items themselves? I think we should get the values, not the item title. Should the values of item. No, but the value is Q374. That is the value of the property. The label of the surname, just like we did for items. I remind you, when we say, I want item and item label, look at the results. The item is a Q number. The item label is the label of the variable item. Just like that, we created just now a variable called surname, right? But we don't want the QID of the surname. We want the label of the surname. And because we have this useful service, this useful service line, we can simply say, you know what? I want the variable to point to the surname item, but I don't care about its number. I just want to see the label 
of the surname. In the select line, remember the select line tells you what will come out. We say, yes, we want the value of the surname property, but we don't care about the actual numerical value. We just want the label of the item with that number. Okay? I'll show, I'll demonstrate, I'll press play. And now we have the actual surname label. That's what we wanted, right? Now that we have this coming out in the output, we can actually order by it. Order by surname label. And now, see, now I got my result indeed ordered by the surnames. No, because it's a date. It's not an item. It's, a, it's an actual date. Could be an item. It, 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 it could be. I mean, we have items about the 21st January as a concept. But when we are talking about a person's date of birth, it's literally just a date value. It's not a link to an item. Yes, you had a question. Uh, can we list the old Turkic poets in this and put, uh, input as a map? As a map? Yeah. What would you like to see on the map? Form, form maybe. Maybe. No, yeah. no, but this is, this is a, good, a good demonstration. He means something. Put it on a map, he says. But I, in order to execute it, need to understand what, what am I putting on a map. People move around, right? So what, what place are you talking about that would be on the map? Their place of birth? Their place of death? These are different places. Something else, like where they were educated. Sure. We can invent all kinds of... But you need to be specific about your question. But yes, we can. In fact, let's do that. Let's switch to maps. Yes, you had a question. We ask first? Oh, yes, yes, you have a microphone. Uh, can, we exclude the, can we exclude the results, for example, uh, we had a list already, uh, three or four of them doesn't have the uh, birth play, uh, date of birth. Yeah. Can we uh, just get the, those uh, Turkish poems who doesn't have birth place on Wikidata? Is yes. it possible? Yes. Excellent question. So, we already know how to exclude people without a date of birth. Remember, when we were trying to display the date of birth, we accidentally excluded everybody who didn't have a date of birth until we uh, added the optional. Remember that? Hello? Are you with me still? Yes? Okay. So, uh, if we remove the optional, then we are excluding the fields that are empty. But this question is the reverse. Right? Did I understand correctly? What if I want to find out who are the Turkish poets and, and uh, novelists who don't have a date of birth so that I can go and put it in? You know, make myself a little to-do list. That's a useful thing to do, right? How do we do that? How do we ask about an absence? I want to get a list where something doesn't exist. We actually don't know how to do that yet. So let's learn. So we want uh, novelists and poets who write in Turkish. Let's, uh, um, yeah, we can, we can leave the surname in. Uh, no, let's leave it out for now. Uh, because I'm not sure we have examples. There were so few people without a date of birth, I'm not sure they would be included. So, the date of birth. Now we want people who don't have a date of birth. For that, we learn a simple new keyword, and that keyword is minus. Minus, like in mathematics. So we say, you know what? I want people who are novelists or poets, right? This was or poets, poets, yes, who write in Turkish, and I don't want people who have a date of birth. Now, I know how to express people who have a date of birth, right? It's item, date of birth, some date, right? That's how I express in Wikidata terms that he has a date of birth. Now, all I need to do is instead of optional, say minus. Exclude. So, exclude items that match this pattern. 
So if a person is a novelist or a poet, he matches, and he speaks Turkish, he matches, but he also has a date of birth, I don't want him, minus the, those people. Right? I want to exclude those people. So instead of include a date of birth if it exists, this now becomes exclude items with a date of birth. And how many results do we expect? Well, turns out we have 12. Uh, three was maybe the novelists, right? Just the novelists were three. But there are also some poets who, ha who don't have a date of birth. And we see, indeed, we got these results, and indeed, they don't have a date of birth. And if we go to one of them, just to be sure, uh, I don't know who this person is, Turkish poet named Ani Hatun, right? And if we look at what we know about her, we know she's human, female, Turkey, Istanbul, place of birth, Istanbul, but we don't have a date of birth for her. See? We have a place of death, native language, occupation poet, and that's it. We don't have a date of birth, indeed. So this query helped us pull from the hundreds and hundreds of poets that we know, the, the, the 12 uh, poets or journalists that need a date of birth, and now one of you could take that as a little to-do list and look it up in some old newspapers or something and figure out the date of death and add it with a citation. Because we don't like it when you kill people on Wikidata without a citation. Okay, so that was about excluding. Thank you for that question, and you had a question. Can you check article or date of birth? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's an article about her, and there is an article in Turkish, but her date of birth is really unknown. See? At least according to Wikipedia. Well, yeah. Yes, the date of death is known, but we, we weren't asking about date of death. We were asking about date of birth. Oh, but we could add, you're saying we could add the date of death. Yes, I leave that as an exercise to you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, my question was about uh, the surname label. Yeah. Uh, can you open the query again? Sure. And it would be amazing if you can control that a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's actually there. Yeah. Um, my question, what if a surname is not an item? Because I don't think every surname is an item. So we just said that surname label, and what if it's not an item, so it won't have a label uh, in it? So yeah. the, I think dramatically the results re like reduced because of this uh, this fact, because some yes. of them are just strings. Yeah. So that's a good question. And the answer is, the Wikidata answer would be, well, it should be an item. So if you encounter someone whose surname doesn't have a Wikidata item yet, go and create it. Mm -hmm. Wikidata items are not created by the little people in the night. They are created by you and me. So this happens to me all the time. If I come and want to document some person with a relatively obscure surname that nobody has created an, uh, uh, an item for, I create it. It takes a minute. You know, create new item, label is the surname, and it's an instance of family name, and that's it. You already have a QID that you can link to. Right? I mean, later you can add more things. You can, as you saw, there was a dictionary of surnames, ID, and stuff. But you don't have to do that. You can create a very bare item just to have a queue number to link to. And the next time someone wants to document someone with this rare surname, they will already have your queue number that you created. So that's the Wikidata way to do it. Yes, you had a question. Yeah, what if, the, if there is no date of birth, but a century or an average like he? He burned from this century to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can put in imprecise dates of birth. So that uh, lady died in the early 18th century, so we could assume that she was more than 10 years old uh, because she was a poet, right? So we can assume that she was born sometime in the 17th century. And we can write that. We can say date of birth, 17th century. We can literally type that, right? And then it's an inaccurate date of birth, but it's better than nothing. We can do that. Uh, I want to move forward. Yes, you had a question? Yes. Uzun zaman biyografi sayfalarına doğum tarihi ve ölüm tarihleriyle ilgili çalışmalar yaptım. I have worked, I have written about date of birth and date of death and 
I have done this because as a result of as a result of queries. But one of the difficulties I faced is because of the Rumi calendars. So I had difficulty about changing the dates. So how, how can we question this? Is this a Rumi Islamic calendar? For example, Russian calendars. Um, when I write about Russian biographies, I have difficulty, experienced difficulty. So how can I have a convenience about this one? of people and edit dates ed, uh, of birth and uh, death uh, but I have uh, the biggest problem I have is if the date is known according to Rumi uh, calendar uh, yeah. yeah not according to solar <laughs> Gregorian calendar yeah so in Wikidata you can actually put in a date in the Julian calendar as well in the pre-Gregorian calendar. You can specify when you're putting in the date, there's a little thing there that you can say, this is in the Julian calendar. When searching. Ah, when searching. Yeah. Yeah. So how to search by non-Gregorian date? Yeah, when I make search, I cannot choose whether yeah. it is. Yeah, that is a little more um, tricky, and I don't want to demonstrate it now because I want to teach more basic things, but I will get back to you and show you later, okay? Yes. Good. No, 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 it's not a bad question. It's a very good question, a perfectly legitimate one, but for my pedagogical purposes here, uh, it would not be a good use of everyone's time to get into this because it's very, very specific and technical. Uh, I do want to teach you something more useful for everyone. We only have 12 minutes left. Like I said, there's m plenty to learn still. I want to show you a few more things, and then we'll, I promise we'll keep answering questions during the breaks, etc., and in the evening, whenever you like. So I want to switch to what we can do with results. We already saw how to add things to, how to add more data to the result. Now I want to show you how we can, uh, first of all, there's a download button here. Okay, you can download this table of results as a CSV file, you know, that you can then put into Excel or Google Sheets and then do some processing with it if you want. Um, you can just download it as an HTML table if you just want to put it on your, I don't know, WordPress or something. If you're a programmer, you can download a JSON file. Programmers know what to do with that and you can use it. So that's just a very quick thing. You can also save a query. Now that we have this really nice query, maybe some of you want to save it so it doesn't get lost. There's no way to save it in Wikidata. The way to save it is to save a link to it. And this is the link button here, you see? The link button, you press it, you get a very short link, w.wiki slash a few characters. And the magical thing is, if you take this link and just paste it, it will open the query system with your query, just the way you left it. And that's amazing, right? So just to prove that to you, I'll just share here. Where was it? Here. I'm just going to share this little link, and any one of you can click that link and see exactly this query. So, uh, <clears throat> moving on a bit, I want to show you what we can do with maps, for example. So here's an example query, super, super simple, look how short it is, that shows hospitals. Hospitals that Wikidata knows about, and the amazing thing is, you run the query, you get, get 41,000 results, okay? Wikidata knows about 41,000 hospitals in the world. And what we have here in the query, you can see, is just a queue number of the hospital. And 
a set of coordinates. A set of coordinates. Because I asked for, in the query, I asked for P625 property of coordinate location. And I put those coordinates into a variable called geo. So that's what I got. I got a column named geo with coordinates. Now what can I do with this? I can put coordinates on a map. You wanted a map, right? I can put it on a map. In fact, I don't need to take the coordinates and put them on a map. Wikidata will do it for me. You see this eye icon here? The visualization. So the default is a table, but I can actually say, put this on a map for me. And just like that, takes a little while because it's 41,000. But just like that, nope. My psychic powers are not working as planned. <clears throat> Hello. And this is what we call this is what we call the demo effect. No, it'll 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 come. <coughs> yeah, too many tabs. So, okay, you know what? We'll get back to it when it recovers. Meanwhile, I'll show you another query. This query shows images of Hagia Sophia in an image grid. Okay? Um, let's keep it simple. And what? how do I do that? I am querying actual files on commons. This is something that maybe Luca will mention later, right? Luca? Yeah, you will yeah, kind of mention it. So one of the things we did with Wikidata, or with the technology of Wikidata, rather, is we gave structured data to every file on commons. If you have uploaded to Commons recently, you have seen that there's kind of a structured data place. And one of the pieces of structured data we can use on Commons is to say, what is in this picture? And in this case, we're using a property called 180, depicts. So we're saying that this file is depicting, is showing something. In this case, the something is 12506, which is Hagia Sophia. And just by running this very simple query, I get 71 results that are files on commons. You can see these are files on commons that Wikidata knows describe Hagia Sophia. Now, the file names don't mean anything to me, so what I would really like is to see them, right? I would like to see them. So... So, I want to see them, yes. There we go. So, I'll zoom out a bit. You can see my query results, instead of a table, I selected image grid. And as long as your query returned a commons file name, we can see it, the results visually. You know, I can just very quickly browse the pictures we have on commons from Hagia Sophia. Okay, so that's a super quick demonstration of how we can also be a little visual with our queries. Ah! And our query about maps died, unfortunately. <coughs> but we'll try it again. There we go. And map. No? Still dies? That's a shame. Yes. O zaman ilk örnekte kedilerle ilgili örneğimizi de liste şeklinde değil de fotoğraflarını göster şeklinde de bakabilirdik. Doğru mu? In our previous example we could get photos of cats in a grid. Yes. Yes. Yes, we have them. Yes, the answer is yes. We could have gotten uh, images added to our um, query, where was it? Our query of um, hang on. Novelists, here we go. Yeah, my computer ran out of memory here. Yeah, so we can actually just add very simply to our query about novelists and poets, right? We could add, show me please, the P18. P18 is image. And put this in a image variable. We add the image variable to our select line so that it comes out in the query. We run our query. 
we get only 97 results. Why? Why only 97? Because only those have images. Not all of the novelists and poets have images. And I did not put optional. Remember the optional thing? I could have put optional, then I would have gotten all of them. But I didn't put optional. And I can now, now that I have commons file names, I can put an image grid. And ta-da! I have these results of Turkish poets, etc. But I want to go back to the map example before we run out of time. So this is a map of hospitals in the world. Is it? No. No. It's a map of hospitals Wikidata knows about. We can see that according to Wikidata, there are practically no hospitals in Kazakhstan. <laughs> Only two. That, that is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, over there in, in Almaty. Right? So, so, but this is, this is great, right? Because this showed us, in a few seconds, it showed us kind of a, literally a map of the data quality about hospitals in Kazakhstan. Obviously, there are many more hospitals in Kazakhstan that simply need to be added to Wikidata or that don't have a coordinate location. Because remember, this map depends on the actual coordinates being there in the item. So our friends from Kazakhstan could do some work, or, or not. You could also do some work. Look up hospitals in Kazakhstan, add their, you know, on Google Maps or whatever, find their coordinates, put them on Wikidata, and this map will change. But my point is, look how easy it was for me, who doesn't know anything special about Kazakhstan, to know how Wikidata is covering Kazakhstan. Visually, I can just visually get an idea. You can see that parts of the world are quite well covered, and other other parts, like uh, Libya, not so much, right? So just putting things on a map is really useful, and you can do it whenever you can somehow get a coordinate. For example, just to uh, round it uh, up, we can uh, to take our novelists and poets, instead of the image, we can say we want to see where they were born on a map, Okay. And this actually is the last technique we will study uh, for lack of time. How do we do that? How do we get the coordinates of their birthplace into our query? Let's think about it. We, we need the, birth, the, the place of birth, right? So item, which is the poet, right? The poet or novelist. Property, place of birth, P19. And then what? Are we looking for a specific place of birth? No, wherever they were born, right? So let's call it place of birth. Okay? And now we want to add it to our select, right? Place of birth. Yes. So here we so here we go. We have this query now. 177 novelists and poets with a surname label, etc. And we have their place of birth, but the place of birth is showing up as Q numbers, right? Because again, I should say place of birth label if I want the human uh, versions, right? So I can run it again. And here we go. We have the place of birth for these, um, for these uh, novelists and poets. But that still doesn't put, put it on a map, right? If I switch to map here, I try to switch to map, it doesn't let me. Why? Because there are no coordinates. What do you want to put on a map? Names? I cannot put that on a map. I need coordinates. How do we get the coordinates? What property do we use? We know the property. The property is 6 to 5 coordinate location. But does the novelist have a property 6 to 5 coordinate location? He doesn't. Because people don't have coordinates. We move around too much, right? We don't have coordinates. What does have coordinates? What am I actually asking? Place for the place of birth, right? I want the coordinates not of the person, but of the place of birth. And this is the last superpower we learned today. And it's a very powerful one. Everything we said up till now, all the patterns were about the item, right? The item has this property and that property, or doesn't have this property, right? It's all about those novelists and poets. But here is the next superpower, making conditions 
about multiple variables. So we already have the place of birth here in this variable, right? We put the P19, the place of birth, we put it into the place of birth variable, and now the magic happens. The next condition is not about item. It's about place of birth. Are you following me? We're now saying the place of birth, whatever it is, I want it to have P625 coordinate location with some value. Am I looking for specific coordinates? No. No, wherever it is, right? So let's call it, I don't know, chords, okay, coordinates. And let's put them in the select because we want them to be outputted, right? Chords. And now let's run this query. And now we have coordinates for these places. And now we can put it on a map. And amazingly, for these hundred and something poets, we now can see where they were born. As we expect, many of them in Turkey and some of them not in Turkey. Right? And we can zoom in, by the way. You know, we can zoom in and see, for example, who were born in Izmir. Right? We can zoom in, zoom in and see that we have two results here. One is Alteok, and one is Hussein Yurtash. Okay, that's what Wikidata knows, right? Again, it's, it's based on what the data that Wikidata has. But do you see what we did here? The map is not the impressive thing here, because we already knew about the map. The impressive thing here is that we asked questions about our kind of main items, the novelists. We found some value, and then we placed another condition about that value. And that's a superpower. Why is it a superpower? Because now we can, for example, ask about people who are novelists whose uh, father was a politician, for example. Right? We start from the novelist, we have a property father that leads to some other item, and then we place another condition on the father item. Right? Or, I don't know, whatever. Politicians whose father was not born in Turkey or something. We, we now, again, every, every uh, uh, technique I showed you expands your horizons very, very much. You can already now, and we haven't touched on advanced techniques yet, and I'm sorry we didn't get to the date stuff. I can show it later. But, um, and by the way, the slides, which I'm going to share, have a lot of other sample queries that I haven't gotten to show you, including some specifically Turkish examples for you, which, of course, you can change the Turkey to Azerbaijan, you can change Turkish to Kazakh, and you can make them about your, yourselves. You can even see things here that help us track our progress on Wikipedia. For example, just to give a super quick example, let's see how many articles on Turkish Wikipedia are about men and how many are about women. Wikidata can count that for us, just like that. Well, a few seconds, uh, because there are many articles on Turkish Wikipedia, but we will get an answer. So, again, look at the slides, because they have a lot of interesting examples, and I remind you, look at this query. It's a little complicated. You don't have to understand every line here. You just need to look for where it says it's about Turkish Wikipedia. And you can see here it mentions tr.wikipedia, right? Change that to KK, and you're talking about Kazakh Wikipedia. And you can see here the results. We have 87,000 articles about men, and 22,000 articles about women, and 50 about trans people, etc., and some other uh, genders. So very easy. I got, you know, not speaking any Turkish, I got this X-ray vision of the shape of Turkish Wikipedia in terms of gender distribution. And another example there was about occupations. So again, without speaking any Turkish, I can know what does Turkish Wikipedia cover. For example, what are the most common professions for men covered on Turkish Wikipedia? Does anyone know? Footballer. Footballer. Correct. <laughs> Uh, which tells us something, right, about what, about what Turkish Wikipedians care about, <laughs> right? Uh, it's, that's not the case in every language Wikipedia. I invite you to test it out. You know, you will see that Japanese people care about other things, not football players. 
So, you know, it's, it, it's a really super interesting way of exploring the data, even across languages and even without speaking the language. So, we're out of time. I want to, to have a good lunch. And uh, thank you for your attention. I hope this has convinced you that the power of Wikidata is awesome and worth learning. Again, there are plenty of examples here for you to steal. And I'm around, and there are friendly people on the project chat. And by the way, there are people whose idea of fun is to hear you make a crazy request and then write a Sparkle query for you. Those people exist, and they hang around the page on Wikidata called Request a Query. So you just need to find that page on Wikidata called Request a Query, and you can without, forget everything I taught you about Sparkle. Just come there and say, I want a query that does this and that, but not this, sorted by that, and someone will write a query for you. But I would be happier if you actually do it yourselves, because now you have the power. So uh, use it for good and not for evil. Thank you. Thank you.